Notion just released their brand new feature, Notion Calendar. Now, the first thing to know is that this is a completely separate standalone app. You actually don't even need a Notion account to use Notion Calendar. Now, the calendar itself is very similar to Google Calendar and it has most of the same functionality, but there are a few additional features available that the Notion Calendar has that the Google Calendar doesn't have. One of the main benefits of using Notion Calendar is that you can connect it up to your Notion account. You can actually associate Notion pages to events within your calendar, and you can even import some of your existing Notion database into the calendar. You can access it by either downloading the app or heading over to calendar.notion.so. So to get started, you do need a Google account. Currently, that's the only way to sign up. I do believe Notion are working on adding more options, but for now, this is the only way. So all you want to do is just click sign up with Google and it will then ask you which account you want to use. It's pretty easy, you just follow the steps. And once you've signed up, the Notion calendar will import your existing Google calendar if you have one. If you don't have one set up, then it will simply be blank. So here's what the calendar looks like. So as you can see, I've just added in a few items here so that you can see how it all appears on the calendar. Now it's super easy to see where you are in the day so you'll see this little red symbol here on the day in question that it is and you'll see this little black bar here to indicate where you are in the day. So it's currently Wednesday evening for me so as you can see anything that has now passed is actually greyed out slightly whereas these future events are a bit brighter so it's really easy to see what you have coming up and what's already passed. It's also super easy to add new items into the calendar. So let's say I want to add something on Thursday morning. I can simply double click here on the calendar and you'll see this little side menu pop up here. So I can simply input the name of the task. So let's say that I need to wash my car. You can select the time and date here. If you actually want this to be an all day event, then you can click on here and toggle on all day. And that will then appear here at the top on the all day row. I'm just gonna leave that off for now. You can also set your task to repeat. So if you need it to repeat every single day, for example, if I click on here, as you can see, it's now added that every single day. There are a ton of different options here and there's even a custom option if you need it. For this one, I'm just gonna select does not repeat, but you can play around with these options. You can also play around with the time zone here if you need to. Now, the Notion calendar is great if you're working with a team because you can add participants in here. You can add a conferencing method. So if you want to set up a Google Meet or a Zoom, you can add that in here. You can add a location and you can also add documents and links to this event. So if you click on here, it will actually allow you to create a brand new Notion page. That's a page within your Notion account or it will allow you to connect up an existing page that you've already created. So let's just connect it with my dashboard as an example, just to show you what that would look like. So if I ever clicked on here, it would open up the page on my Notion, which is pretty cool. And you can add as many of these documents or just website links, whatever you want onto here. You can also add a description of the event here if you like. There's also a few more options down here. So you can set your availability during the event. You can change the color of the event. So let's say I want this one to be yellow and you can also set a reminder up here if you need to. Now, one thing that I absolutely love about the Notion calendar is how easy it is to move move tasks around and make them shorter or longer. So let's say that I actually end up wanting to do this on the Friday rather than Thursday. I can simply just click on it and drag it and drop it onto Friday. I can drop it later. I can move it around pretty much anywhere I want. And if I actually want to make this longer, I can simply just drag it and make it longer. And as you can see, that's updating the times and the dates on the actual event. So it's just so easy to move things around. There are also a ton of different view options. So I'm currently on the weekly view, as you can see, but if you click up here, you can change it from week to day. So if you just want to see an overview of the the current day. You can change it to month so you can see an overview of your month. There are also a few custom options like the number of days. So you can actually say, I just want to see two days. If I click on here, it will just show me today and tomorrow. You could select four days and it will show you four days. I love how customizable this is. And there's even an other option here if you want something that's not listed. So I'm just gonna set it back to week so we can see the full week. Another thing that I love is under the view settings, you can actually switch weekends on or off. So if you're just using the Notion calendar for work, then you might want to switch weekends off. So if I click on that, as you can see, weekends have disappeared and it now just goes from Monday through till Friday. But if you're using this for other purposes and you might want to keep weekends on. So as you can see, Saturday and Sunday have been added back in. You can also choose to either switch on or off declined events. And I also like that you can add the week numbers as well. So if I just switch that on, let's just switch this back to the month view. And as you can see here, it has these little week numbers here, which I think is kind of handy as well. I'm just gonna set it back to the week for now. Another thing that I really love about the Notion calendar is that you can actually set up multiple different Google accounts on the one calendar. So say you have two different Google accounts. This is just my personal one, but maybe you have a work one as well. You can actually connect both of them up to the Notion calendar and they will both display on the exact same calendar. So they kind of overlay on top of each other. So if you did want to add 
add another account, you can simply just click here, add calendar account, and it will then allow you to add another one if you just click this connect button here. You can then simply use these toggle buttons here to toggle them on or off. So if I toggle this one off, as you can see, some of the events have disappeared. So those were the events connected to this email address, whereas all of the other events are connected to this one. And as I mentioned earlier, you can also connect up any existing Notion databases to this Notion calendar. Now, the first thing that I want to tell you about this feature is that you can only connect them together if the database in question has either a calendar view or a timeline view. So I did actually set one of these up earlier just so I could show you. So if I just go on here, here is a quick little tasks calendar that I set up earlier with just a few example tasks. So this is a calendar database view. As I said, it will also work with a timeline view. So if you have one of these set up, you'll now notice this little open in calendar button appearing on every calendar within your actual Notion workspace. Now, if you click on that, it will actually just take you over to the Notion calendar. So it'll just open up the calendar.notion.so website. And once you click that, it will then add all of the tasks onto your Notion calendar. So these green ones here are the tasks from that database that I just showed you. And over here, you'll now see this little Notion area where any databases that you've connected up will appear here and you can toggle them on or off. So if I toggle that off, anything that was related to that database has disappeared. These are the things connected to my Gmail account. But if I just untoggle that again, as you can see, they have now appeared once again. Now, one other cool thing about this is that if I change this, so let's just say that my yoga class moves an hour later, I can just click on here and drag it an hour later. And this will actually update the database in my Notion space. So as you can see, this yoga class, we've now just moved to 2 to 3 p.m. So if I just go back on here and click on yoga class, as you can see, it's now 2 to 3 o'clock. It will also update the other way as well. So if I change something on here, so let's just move it to the 19th. So I'm just going to change the dates here to the 19th. So it's now January 19th, 2 to 3. And if I go back to my calendar now, as you can see, that's just jumped over here. So if you update one, it will update the other, which is also really, really handy. Okay, so those are the main features of the Notion calendar that I wanted to show you today. This is just a simple video to show you how to set it up and how to start using it. There are a few more features. So for example, you can actually share this with team members. You can overlay other team members calendars on top of yours. It has some scheduling features that make it easy to schedule meetings with other people as well. But these are just the key things that I wanted you to know if you're using it for the first time. And that's it for this video. If you did find it useful, then I would really appreciate if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as I do post new Notion tutorials like this one twice a week.